This episode contains trigger warnings for the following subjects. Child abuse, neglect, sexual assault, ritual abuse, and the abuse of authority. Welcome to Neopaganism and Sexual Abuse, the second episode of Three Pagans and a Cat. This is a special episode wherein we will be discussing very sensitive topics and some upsetting recent news in the pagan community. If the topics warned for are triggering or distressing content for you, please do not listen to this episode. We care about you and want you to be safe. You may call me Ode. And you may call me Carr. I'm Ode's father. And Mary Meet, I am Gwyn, Ode's mother. So we're here today to talk about the recent accusations uh, forwarded by Moira Grayland against Isaac Bonowitz of sexual assault when she was a child. And one of the reasons that we decided to do this special episode is because Carr is a member of the ADF. Uh, he's it, on the Dedekind path. He's on the right. Dedekind yeah. path. And it hit him very hard as someone who is new to the Dedekind path and to paganism in general. Mm-hmm. We just felt like, you know, as a family, we were discussing this. And so we felt like we needed to address it on our podcast as well. To be clear at the very beginning here, none of us have read the full text of this book. And none of us intend to read the full text of this book, although we have read excerpts from it. Yes. And multiple articles. And multiple articles. The reason we're not reading the text is because it is published by an alt-right figure whom we all find repellent and to whom we don't want to give any money. But if you want to read the full text of this book for yourself, it is called... The Last Closet, The Dark Side of Avalon. It is available on Amazon... It's published by Castilia House, uh, which is owned by Theodore Robert Bill, better known as Vox Day, mm-hmm. who is uh, an alt-right asshole. Yeah. And white nationalist trash. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That sums Pretty it much. up. Pretty much sums it up. Yeah. yeah. It's got some of the most repellent beliefs imaginable. Right. About all people and, groups that do not match his own. Yeah. yeah. And here's the deal. So, like, I applaud Moyer's courage. Oh, yes. yeah. And, and, and talking about this. Unfortunately, because of the publisher that she's chosen mm-hmm. for her book, it's it's tainted by his reputation, mm-hmm. which is going to make some people ignore it. Yeah, which, I think which is, is very, very right, unfortunate. Which is very unfortunate. So we, we need to look past that, even though right. we won't buy it yeah, because we, we don't want to give we need them to, money. But. We need to be clear. We support Moira. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. She's, she's suffered tremendously from childhood into adulthood because... Those wounds linger. And she's still being taken advantage of, honestly, exactly. in our opinion, yeah, by Gwyn, the Gwyn and I, right. yeah. Gwyn and I have discussed this and the this particular publisher. And our feeling is that Moira is in a vulnerable position. She was put in a vulnerable position by vile people. And she is still being abused emotionally by mm. by people who are using her for, for their political purposes. And, and I that's think, tragic. And it is right for her to speak out. I mean, she Absolutely. was... I mean, she kept silent for so many years. You know, her mother was this famous was Marian, author. Was Marion Zimmer Bradley. Exactly. Um, uh, to be clear. So yeah. uh, a huge novelist. Mm-hmm. Um, sci-fi. Sci-fi. You know, yeah. yeah the, and the award, an award-winning series. novelist. Wide, worldwide acclaim. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Marion had like the the four huge tags of today. Mm-hmm. You know, she was pagan. She yep. was a feminist. She was gay. And she was a sci-fi writer. Uh-huh. Exactly. So, so she <laughs> was like the it woman of right. her day. And, you know, to find out as a fan of hers mm-hmm. um, of, and a fan of those books, to find out that she treated her children with such contempt, contempt and, and cruelty. horror and cruelty and sexual usury. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it just, it, it boggles my mind. It breaks my heart. Um, and I, I commend Moira for having the courage in 2014 to begin sharing her story. Right. I do want to point out, yeah, though, the, the, that there's a timeline here. There is a timeline here. You know, Isaac Bonewitz was also a very uh, important prominent, figure yeah. in the pagan, in community, the pagan yes, community, yeah. in Druidry. Um, and to this was a huge shock and, and a, a ripple of just disbelief throughout mm-hmm. the pagan community because of who he has been to so many people. And I do think it's important to note that in 2014, she did not mention him. Her, uh, her, accusations her accusations in 2014 were specifically against her mother, yeah, Marion right. Zimmer Bradley. And her father. Right. 
Well, her father had been earlier. Her right, father, that's right. Her father, she sent to prison right. for molesting um, a boy. Kenny, yeah. a boy yeah. named Kenny. Yeah, who was yeah. 11. Who was yeah. 11 at the time of, of his And what bravery assault. that took. Yeah. I'm my, yeah. my goodness. Uh-huh. I mean, and so her father, Walter Brain, died in prison thanks to Moira's courageous act. Yeah, yeah. And she said the reason why she didn't come out about her mother was that so many people admired loved her, admired and her, her and her work, her work, and that kind of stuff. But and she so, said she she said she didn't want to taint that, right? Yeah, for people. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think there comes a point, and we have dis- discussed this before. Do we want to be taught and uh, admire a person who, on the surface, on her, you know, mm-hmm. presented to this world this false picture? When her true character was, I'm sorry, but truly abhorrent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, do we I, want to admire this woman? I think it's important don't. early here to address exactly what the accusations have been. Marion Zimmer Bradley is accused of child abuse, neglect, and sexual assault. Isaac Bonowitz is accused of sexual assault. And it posthumously for both. Right. Both right. both are right. dead. There is, as I understand it, documented evidence of, of uh, Marion Zimmer Bradley's abuse and neglect. Mm-hmm. There is not documented evidence of Isaac Bonowitz's... The alleged assault. Alleged I think assault. We say. And um, there is some question over the events that Moira describes having taken place at the time she describes them. When yep. she so this was in 1972. Them. Yep. Mm-hmm. At a Gray, house that was hers. It was, no, Grayland is her last name. It was Gray... It's Gray something. Yeah. Gray it, was Dian, it was Diana Grayhaven, maybe. Yeah. It was yeah. Diana Gray Paxson's Haven. house. Yeah, yeah. Diana, Diana Paxson's, Paxson's house. house. Um, and so Moira said that happened in 1972. Diana Paxson has come out and said uh, that Isaac wasn't even here in 72. He was he living did in Minneapolis. Spend time at Diana's house. He, yep. he lived in he lived Diana's in basement. In the late 60s, yeah. In, um, while he was writing Real Magic. And yeah. he probably and most likely did cross paths with Moira and her family at some point, but not necessarily at that time. Well, right. we, yeah. we know, we I, I believe it's, I believe. Um, that Marion, yeah, yeah. Marion yeah, Zimmer Bradley knew Isaac Bonowitz, right? Yeah. And the the three families were familiar with one another, right? Because they were, you know, both Marion and Isaac were prominent figures of right. that time yeah. in the pagan. And so community. was Diana Paxson. And so yeah, was Di- yeah. I mean, they were. It was still a fledgling community within mm-hmm. the United States, and they they were very large figures right. in moving that forward. Yep. I also want to point out that as out of a book of 632 pages, Isaac is only talked about in three of them. And mm-hmm. very um, vaguely. And very vaguely. But now, the uproar yeah, yeah, we've, with that we've has read, been We've huge. read the excerpts yeah. mm-hmm, from that section of the book. And she she specifically says that she doesn't want to, to go into details right. about the situation. And right. I think it's important to note she was a six year old child mm-hmm. at the time she claims that this encounter or these encounters happened with Isaac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and her abuse started with, with her mother and uh, presumably, when she was three. yeah, when yeah. she was three. And presumably, my understanding is that other members of her mother's coven also participated in some of the abuse. And her story has been corroborated as far as. Her, um, the abuse she experienced at the hands of her parents mm-hmm. um, has been corroborated by her brother. Yes, yep. by Michael. Yep. What this has done, as far as the ADF is concerned, is there's a huge uproar right now. Mm-hmm. Um, their first response was shitty. <laughs> they basically it was a panic like, response. Yeah, I mean, their 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 first response was basically, "Well, Isaac hasn't been involved since right. forever. Was and just, he was only of, one of the founders. Right, he was to just sort of founders. try and distance him right. from. Yeah, distance and, and the fact the, of the matter the is, like, community. the ADF is because of Isaac's vision. Yeah, I mean, that's the reason why it exists. And yes, he hasn't been involved in the day to day as the Archdruid since 1996, and he's been dead since 2010. And this is just coming out. But the, whether it happened or not is immaterial to what needs to happen within not just the ADF, but within the pagan community mm-hmm. as a whole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving it's forward. coming up with some kind of thing where we can protect people who come into our community who, you know, from predators. Mm-hmm. And, and we've got to gotta figure out a way to do that. To be clear, like, this, we're not even just talking just about, about protecting children here. A lot of the people who who are just entering the pagan community are vulnerable to abuse by 
predators because they don't know what to expect and coming they're, in. And right. they're coming to someone who is either a mentor or into a coven. Mm-hmm. They People who are in a position of authority over them who can use that authority to coerce them perhaps to do acts that they would not be interested in doing otherwise, but they don't know because they're new to paganism. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, I, and I do think that is you know, something that starting, needs to be talked about. They're starting a new spiritual path, which is, which is a situation that leaves people feeling vulnerable and, and it makes it more difficult for them to maybe assess how they feel mm-hmm. about something, especially if they're forced to make a snap judgment on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sacred sex, you know, these, these, uh, rituals, the, the, uh, you know, the symbolic gestures mm-hmm. that are included, like specifically in Gardnerian Wicca, mm-hmm. which Gerald Gardner created Wicca as a fertility religion. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, it has evolved a lot since, you know, and right. there are many, since many Gardner's traditions day. since Gardner's day, but that does still remain, um, you know, uh, it's still Gardner's it, religion. It's still, yeah. And it, it does. You know, it remains a beautiful act as long as it is consensual. Mm -hmm. But if there is anyone anywhere within a coven or in a a situation between a mentor Mm -hmm. and a student where there's even the hint of of coercion, even the hint of, well, you have to do this because Mm -hmm. it's part of the practice, that's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It it just it's wrong, and I think that we need to examine that. Consent trumps magic. Okay, let's be very clear about that. Right. It does. It's very important. The ADF has been working on this for a while. There Mm -hmm. was actually a guy named Daniel Scott Holbrook who was a a part of the ADF who in 2016 sent a picture of a young child to a police officer and was arrested. He ended up pleading no contest and got six months probation, which I think is a travesty. Yeah, concurred. but, Mm. But that was kind of the beginning of the ADF going, okay, we've got to come up with something. Right. It's time to, we have to protect our members. To to investigate how we as a community are going to handle this. Instead of just letting law enforcement do it. Right. I I think this, it, you know, I'm going to say it, even though it shouldn't need to be said, this is not just a problem within the pagan community, obviously. Right. Um, It is a, it is a problem throughout our society and through multiple religions and, and all of history all of history right this is a issue it's a human problem. it's a right. human yeah. problem yeah. but since we know there are vulnerabilities in the pagan community we should address it's, them. it's our responsibility as members of that community to deal with this and try to reduce those threats exactly well, let's be honest and certainly in the united states the pagan community is already somewhat looked down upon yeah because mm-hmm. exactly we're, we're seen as a quote-unquote christian nation mm-hmm. and so people look down upon the pagan community already they so already think we're simple wanna, basically all we're doing is throwing more firewood on the fire at mm-hmm. that point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we need to be smart enough to handle this in the beginning mm-hmm. and yep. not with, at the end of things. And, and right. with intelligence and empathy and... We need to be actionary, not reactionary. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yep. Every time this comes down to, well, there's already been a crisis, it's too late. We fucked right. up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's time to, to set things in motion so that we mm-hmm. can start preventing this instead of dealing with mm-hmm. the fallout. And I this. do think that we have to acknowledge the fact that... Um, because of the way Gardner set up Wicca, it has left an opening, a door for predators mm-hmm. that we have not addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Within the pagan community. Because, because we want to be sex positive. You yeah. Know? And right. I get yeah, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and listen, I'm very sex positive. Consent is part of sex positivity, and I think it's a part that's not absolutely. discussed and well, explained clearly. sufficiently right. to a lot of Because a lot of people don't understand that coercion invalidates consent. And absolutely. And clearly that's a, it's a problem throughout our community, right. but also throughout our society, our society. right now. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, you're seeing it everywhere. With mm-hmm. the, with the Me Too and yep. the whole business with Hollywood and, and all politics. sectors. Politics. 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 And, yeah. Yeah. All of this. Yeah. It's everywhere yeah. now, right now. So it is a timely issue that we need to deal with. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. As far as what the ADF is doing, they have worked on a policy which is going to be... It's actually the sexual misconduct policy is out. Mm-hmm. Um, they've released that. Um, if you want more information on that, I will post a link to it in the notes for this episode so that you can get to it fairly easily. Uh, but just so you know, they oppose any form of sexual misconduct by anybody, basically, by mm-hmm. their clergy, the staff, employees, volunteers, members, all of that. Um, the policy goes into detailing what sexual misconduct is, how to report it, how it's investigated, and what the responses to it are. 
What we cannot do is throw out the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. Yeah. There are going to be people who come into paganism who are coming out of prison. Oh, God. Yeah, this is very who, important. Or who have a CSC charge. Mm-hmm. Criminal sexual conduct is yep. what CSC is. And it's very vague. It is very vague. If you pee in public behind a dumpster and you're caught... You have a CSC. You have a CSC. So there's a lot of, like, really... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Crappy, that's and a, and you'll end up on the the sex section, offender yeah, registry, sex, right, and so registry. you know when you when when you do those checks and you say okay who are the sex offenders in my area, they they don't those registries don't tell you what the offense was, right? So it's impossible to know if you're dealing with an actual predator or if you're dealing with an idiot who got drunk at the pub once right. and mm-hmm. yeah. Also. The uh, the ADF is doing an entire training uh, for consent for all of their clergy, all of the members of the Mother Grove. The Mother Grove is kind of like the higher right. part the... of, of the ADF, um, regional druids. And after that, after those are done, they're actually going to start sending it out to grove organizers, senior druids in particular areas. Mm-hmm. That kind of a thing, so that everybody will have this. Mm-hmm. They can train their members on it. Right. Growth, growth yep. leaders can train mm-hmm. their members on it. They're also going to do a SWOT analysis, uh, strengths, strengths, weaknesses. Um, I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> you forgot it again. I did. Opportunities. <laughs> opportunities. Yes, thank you. And, and, and weaknesses. Threat. Threats. 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 Threats, yes. Strengths, weaknesses, <laughs> opportunities, and threats. Um, just to see where the ADF you know, falls into that. Mm -hmm. And they're actually going to send that out to all members. The entire membership is going to get a chance to that assessment to that, which I think is great. Oh yeah. There has been a huge reactionary thing where a lot of people have left ADF already. Just, Mm -hmm. just appalled, just Just appalled appalled and left. But I think if you, I think the the problem is, is that worth again, throwing out the baby with the bathwater in some ways we can't overlook what, Isaac is accused of. No. Exactly. We cannot push it under the carpet. Yeah. We can't ignore it. And you can't just walk away from it. And we can't just walk away from it. But we need to make sure that that what we have are positive responses Mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And I think the ADF is doing that. Yeah. I'm still not sure where that leaves me. Mm -hmm. But at this point... I'm leaning towards staying in. Mm-hmm. Um, if I see all of the stuff they've talked about come to fruition, Being right. if I see the consent out. training come out, Apply. if I see the SWAT stuff come out, mm-hmm. if I see all of that happen, I think I'll be okay staying in there. As a child who was sexually abused by a neighbor mm-hmm. and as the son of a sexual predator, you know, these are... It's an issue very close yeah, to you. Right. It's, it's very a, close it's, to you. Yeah, it's an issue that's very close to me. And there's a reason why I never left my kids... Yeah. With my father because mm-hmm. I didn't trust him. Yeah. And and I taught my kids how to Yeah, I got extensive essentially mm-hmm. self defense training that I didn't understand as self defense training when I was a child. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought we were playing games games. You know, my dad would hold my wrist um and teach me how to to twist out so that I could break out of anyone's grasp at like a moment's notice, Mm -hmm. how to do that with one hand, how How to to do that with both hands. Yeah. To, to kick and fight and claw and scratch and scream and bite and make as much noise and cause as much trouble as possible in case I was ever, you know, grabbed or touched or made to feel uncomfortable by a stranger or a neighbor or anyone in the family. And we always, both, uh, Cara and I always encouraged our children to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Um, I was also a a victim of sexual assault as a child between the ages of four and six, a 16 year old neighbor assaulted me. And, um, at four, I, I, readily went to my parents and told them what happened. Mm -hmm. But at six, when he came back, because my parents believed me, they told his parents and he was sent away. But he came back two years later, supposedly, you know, fixed, Mm -hmm. whatever, wherever they sent him. He hadn't been back a week, I don't think, Mm -hmm. before I was cornered and groped and threatened. And at six, and he made me feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Like I was the one who should be ashamed. And it happened more than once. And I did not tell my parents about it that time because I felt shamed. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, that's what predators do. They shame their victims. They uh, hold power over them in some way to keep their silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that we always taught our children was to not be afraid to tell us mm-hmm. 
what was going on in their lives, or at least to tell someone they trusted, a right. teacher, a friend, something, if something were untoward were to happen. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that to people, you know, because Carr is talking about people who are involved in an organized uh, group with mm -hmm. with the ADF. Um, covens can handle this as an organized as a group. Coven, yeah. But I myself am a solitary. Yeah. And there are many, 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 many solitaries out there. And so right now I want to speak to my solitary brothers and sisters um, and say, listen, if you are in a situation where you are unsafe or you feel unsafe with a you mentor, have a bad mentor. Yeah. If yeah. you have a mentor who is pushing you into doing something you're not, you're not comfortable with, if something just feels off, please protect yourself and remove yourself from that person's presence. And yeah. I know that's hard. It is a very scary. scary thing to do. But it is the most important step you can take. It is. Because you have to be safe. And and that takes, I know that takes strength that you may not feel like you have. But I promise you, you do. Yeah. You have it. And you know what? If you don't feel strong, well, I have news for you. There are a whole bunch of gods who would be That's just right. delighted to kick somebody's ass on your behalf. That's right. There, there are gods who explicitly their whole deal is fucking up racists mm -hmm. and, and rapists. Artemis, and, hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and if you don't feel like you have the strength in yourself, somebody out there does. That's right. And you don't have to be, at least in my belief structure, you don't have to be personally associated with a god or a goddess. You don't have to, to be ask a their help. No. If you are in a situation that requires their assistance, you can do that. I believe I believe our gods are active forces in the world. They're paying attention, mm -hmm. they're listening, and they've all got very specific interests. Listen, somebody out there is interested in that's you. That's right. That's right. So just be safe. I think that's the the, the most important thing that I want to say to solitaries. Just be safe. And if you are with someone who, who's, uh, dangerous. who's dangerous, who you feel threatened by, even in the slightest way, emotionally, spiritually, or physically, please, please remove yourself from that person's influence. Because let's be clear. If your mentor is coercing you to have sex or to perform blood magic mm -hmm. or to work with spirits you're unfamiliar with or uncomfortable with or, or to do literally anything in your spiritual practice that you're just not comfortable with and are never going to be comfortable with. That person is dangerous. They are a predator. They are not just pushing you. They're dangerous and it's time to let go. That's right. That's right. They are abusing whatever authority you have allowed them to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, if you want to read more about the accusations uh, about Isaac that can be found on the wild mm -hmm. which um, is an excellent article yeah it really yeah, it's is, very it's thorough very it's very thorough, thorough. The, the, the one part I think they leave out too much is about who it's published by mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. yeah uh, but there's also uh, but at least they touch be, on it. I will say be careful going into the comments yes. on that particular article it gets vitriolic and pretty unpleasant yeah. people yeah. Are, yeah. people are pretty pretty uh, wound up about this understandably mm -hmm. yeah. keep in mind if you read that article you will see it that uh isaac's widow and yeah. uh previous wife wife number four mm -hmm. um, and son deborah and lip deborah lip yep and his son arthur lip bonowitz have all come out and said this is not in character character for mm -hmm. isaac there's also an article on patheos there are several articles by on Lilith Pathios. Dorsey, who talks about a time when she was traveling with Isaac and how he felt so uncomfortable. They ended up in a place where there was terrible weather mm. um, in New York, and they had to pull over and get a hotel, even though they were supposed to drive straight mm -hmm. through. And the only hotel room available, because everybody else was stopping, yeah. was a one bed. They were not married or having any kind mm -mm. of relationship. Right. And they both ended up staying up all night. She, because she was nervous that there was somebody else in her bed because she's a she survivor been, of sexual yep. abuse. And Isaac all night because he was afraid he would fall asleep and accidentally put a leg or a hand near her mm -hmm. and it would freak her out. So he ended up staying up all night as well. She describes having felt very safe and respected during that that event. Yes. Um, yeah. It's it's good to have these, these character references, especially since Isaac is not alive, to comment. That's what I was going to, to, to say is that... While I, you know, we have to take her account and seriously. respect it yeah. and take it seriously, 
we also have to take into account that the man cannot defend himself. He mm-hmm. cannot offer offer any kind of input into the situation or even reparation if he were to admit that it happened. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I do think we have to take into account that what his widows, his son, and people that knew him very well have to say about his character. Right. Agreed. I do want to make clear that my stance is and has always been that I ethically and morally must support the victim or accuser in this situation Mm -hmm. as that person is the one in the most vulnerable place. And that is especially true uh, in a situation like this where Isaac is dead and can be hurt no longer. That's right. Right. And unless some kind of evidence comes to light that completely exonerates him, we do have to honor the fact that she is making these accusations Mm -hmm. and she believes them to be true. Yeah. Yeah. That's important, and we have to we have to support her. She's been victimized mm-hmm. enough in yeah. her life. She exactly. is. Yeah. She has been viciously, repeatedly abused. Yes, and is very clearly, very deeply wounded by this. Yes, absolutely. And so Moira has the full measure of my respect and support. Absolutely, I agree. Mm-hmm. Do wish she had picked a different publisher. Yes. Uh, yeah. saying that, but. Well, no, we it, that's, to, it's fair. You know, we do have to put out there. We have to put out there. I can't read, I can't read this book. Right. No. Yeah, and, and the fact that, you know, that's she also has, sadly, because of this entire situation, she has a very almost vitriolic, uh, view of LGBTQ. the LGBTQ yeah. community. Yeah. And speaking as a bisexual woman who is the mother of people who are a mm-hmm. part of that community, and, and, a, the and the daughter of right. someone who to, was uh, gay. To, to be clear, I owed am non-binary and pansexual. So, you know, I, I find that in, you know, I find that very difficult. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because I want to, because I do support her. I do, uh, you know, in that she, as a victim, mm-hmm. I support that she needs to bear witness to what has happened to mm-hmm. her. But I cannot, cannot support her stance her tarring on the whole community. Her tarring the whole yeah. community for her mother's crimes. Crimes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Her mother and her father's crimes. Yeah. And that, in my opinion, is just wrong. It is. Yeah. It's very wrong. I understand and it how she... And it just continues the cycle yeah. of hurt. I, and, I, I understand how she got to that still, place, but... That's still sexual abuse. It is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a different... Treating the LBGTQ community in that way is still sexual abuse. It's just different. It it it, it just um, perpetuates the violence and the yeah. and the hurt mm-hmm. and the anger. And it's not uncommon in the sci-fi community. I mean, Orson Scott Card yeah. Yeah. has come out yeah. and been very then, vitriolic yeah. towards the LBGTQ community. Which makes, makes... This is unfortunate since I love those books but man does it hurt me to read them right right and i I think i think that's something that we need to talk about is you know where does this leave you on somebody like orson scott card or marion zimmer bradley i mean how do you handle do you read the books do you throw them all away do you take them out and burn them and ode and i have had this discussion before now for me personally if it's a fictional novel you know a series of fiction novels i can set those aside and say okay I loved them once, but I'm really disillusioned by who this person turned out to be. If it is someone who's a nonfiction writer, whose writing has like influenced my spiritual path or my, my being in some really uh, specific way, um, that's even worse for me. Here's something, though, like... I was spiritually influenced mm, by fiction. A lot of people right, were yeah. spiritually influenced you know, like, by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Yeah, yeah like yeah. there were there there there's a, a book by Tamith uh, by Tanith Lee called Biting the Sun, which was formative for me that mm-hmm. I read when mm-hmm. I was a teenager and like it really influenced how I saw myself and how I saw my relationship with my body and with the rest of the world and, and that again, was again those And it was a science important. fiction book. It was a, it was you know, it was it, that was an event. That's a very important book for me. And so you can't say, you know, that because it's fiction, it doesn't have any. I did not say that. No, I, I know. But I'm, I'm saying like, I think it has different impact yeah. from nonfiction, That's maybe, true. in that you're not going to take it as, you know, law. But, you know, at the same time, it is going to, it's going to. Everything we read, it's has going some to affect, kind of yeah, effect. your, yeah. your development as a person, especially That's if true. you, if you read it at a young age, which a lot of science fiction That's and true. fantasy is, is read by the young. Right. And yeah. I do think we have to take into account when these kinds of accusations or revelations are made about really influential people in whatever 
genre or area that they are influential in, we have to take into account how we go from there. If we mm-hmm. include them again, in our, or still, in, our, in, our, in our diet of content, in our diet mm-hmm. of content. And yeah. for me, I'm going to have to say no, as far as Marion Zimmer Bradley goes. Well, just so that people know on the Marion Zimmer Bradley front, uh, the publisher of all of her eBooks mm-hmm. is donating all income for sales to the charity Save the Children. Which since, I think is fabulous. So, since 2014, since when the 2014, first allegations yeah. were made yeah. against yeah. Marion Zimmer Bradley. Um, and then uh, Janie Lee Simner, who was part of writing some of the Dark Over series, and also her husband, who sold Bradley's magazine, mm-hmm. of the Dark Over magazine, mm-hmm. are donating all of their advances and the money from the sales and all of the royalties and everything to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, or RAIN. So, I know some people would so, say that's too little too late, but it is something. Well, well and, and again, we talked about having positive things yeah, uh-huh, come out of out the of, crap that we've had. Exactly. Yeah. And this is something that's positive that's yep. come out of the crap right. that, you know, that we've had. Yep. So we need to continue it's a, that That's trend. a response rooted in compassion right. Right. And, right. and regret. Yep. Right, you know, yeah, exactly. by by people who didn't know this was happening and couldn't have stopped it at the time, but yeah. now that they are aware, yeah. right, you not know, they want what, to make amends. Not yeah. unlike what we're seeing in other sectors, such as Hollywood, mm-hmm. such as uh, other corporate areas, yep, um, yeah, yeah, because I mean, like, of with... all of these allegations and and the just the the bravery, yeah. Of these people who are mm-hmm. coming forward and coming saying, hey, forward. this yeah. is what happened to yeah. me. Yep. And finally, finally, as a society, we're saying we're not going to, we're saying, we're listening yeah. and we're not, and we're saying we're not going to take this shit anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to do something about it. You know, you're talking about in Hollywood, it's like Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, who all of his first probably eight movies mm-hmm. were all part of the Harvey Weinstein company. Right. Yep. And Kevin has said that every dollar he makes off of them, he's donating. Which I think is fabulous. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a, that's again, a good response. It's mm-hmm. a step forward. It's, mm-hmm. you know, those are the things that we need to do. We cannot... It's an effort to improve the world. Right. Yes. 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 In a very direct and immediate and this and can't be something that we just do way. for a short period of time and then forget and it all starts up again. Mm-hmm. Right. This has got to be a, a change. An ongoing you know, an effort. An ongoing effort for positive change. Right. And the empowerment of victims. And to be, let's be clear... It's not just that victims need support, although they absolutely do. Mm-hmm. It's also that abusers need to be fixed. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, if... if They're if, often if, abusers because they were themselves abused well, at some let's, point. Right. Well, uh, yes. But, but um, that, that cycle can that be broken. Does, yes, exactly. It, and that's the point. Right. And, and, exactly. Okay. If we help the victims... When they're, you know, and... No, but I, I, I want to be clear. Mm-hmm. It's not just about helping the victims. Right. We also need to, and like maybe this isn't a popular stance, but we also need to help the abusers because there is something wrong yeah. in their person yeah. that needs that would to be... them to do this to, yeah, be, that to needs, begin with. Yeah, that needs to be dealt with. And I whether totally that's agree. because they were abused themselves and are reacting against that, or whether that's just because there's... There's personality something personality disorder. Something. Yeah, because there's just something in their makeup that inspires them to 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 hurt other people. You know, and listen, I understand. I felt the impulse to hurt people. I think we all have on some level at some stage in our lives mm. felt the impulse to hurt yeah. somebody. Yeah. It's just a matter of, of how you deal Res- with that. You can't yeah. control what your feelings are. You can only control what you do about them. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so I think it's just as important to to deal with the living abusers who are yeah. still, you know, around to exactly. be healed. Right. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And while we can't unmake the past, no. we can shape our future. Exactly. Absolutely. And so we need to make the future a place where predators find no quarter. No. Nah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right? And where those who have already suffered can be healed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So, I mean, that's that's where we need to get to. That's exactly yep. right. Um, and we can't change what happened. No. no. Can't do anything about that. No. no. And we also can't let the these past events rip the community apart. No. Right. You know. And we need to be very careful not to just pretend it didn't happen. Yes. We've done this before as a community with the Frosts who who wrote a book in the 70s or 80s that 70s, yeah. in the 70s they that were very influential they were very influential in the pagan community they wrote a book that that specifically described incest and and child uh sexual assault as part of sexual initiations and 
they were not brought to 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 any consequences for that for decades. No. It was decades before anyone even called them on it. And it, it, it wasn't until the 90s that they made any kind of retraction. And even then, the full text of of this repellent ritual was, was still included in mm-hmm. the, the next edition of the book. They just added a little forward that said, mm, by the way, the child should be 18. This isn't a new problem no. in our community. No. And we have let it slip under the rug and be ignored before. You can still find the Frost's books. In pagan stores, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. there there are still people who carry it and still people who swear by it. And yeah. like we we can't afford to keep doing this. No, we can't. We can't. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I think we, you know, I, I think we've had a discussion before where there was some kind of an initiative uh, for a pagan wide, yeah, sexual, pagan wide sexual something safety. that could just be sort of right. distributed to every group, yeah, yeah. and so and that everyone would have the same policies, and yeah. it fell apart because people couldn't agree on the age, age of, of consent. consent. Yeah. Which and I'm sorry, stupid. but that's a problem. The yeah. the age of consent is whatever it legally is in your country. Your state. spiritually yeah. relevant age of consent that's is right. not part of this conversation. Exactly, and yeah. if in I'm sorry, but I think. If someone is really obsessed with a particular age that is below the the legal the age, legal in your age of your country in your country, your country or state in yeah. your country or state, then that person really needs to reevaluate themselves. That, that <laughs> person is one of the people that, I'm talking about exactly. who needs help healing yeah. who, because who, that's a pred- that's predatory behavior mm-hmm. that needs to be addressed. I'm sorry. It's that's uh, how I feel. It's a predatory impulse. Yes, at the it's very a predatory least. impulse. Yes. There's that a difference needs between to be. the behavior. Yeah, that's let's, true. I want to be. Yeah, yeah. the impulse. That's yeah. that's true. Because that's, that's that what I'm really, saying. Yeah. It, Everyone has feelings. Mm-hmm. You can't control what your feelings are. That's right. Those are just something your brain throws at you, whether right. you want them or not. Right. The it's only thing you, you control is your actions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, another another thing that's been part of this conversation for us for our family um, is because. This has happened in the ADF. Carr is now addressing how he feels about being part of the ADF. And that that very much mirrors an experience I've been undergoing since I got started in heathenry, which is that heathenry is infested with white nationalist assholes, with neo-Nazis and racists and homophobes and some of the most repellent people on earth whom I want nothing to, to do with. Um, and they're all throughout heathenry, and trying to filter them out is extraordinarily difficult, especially since there's a concept in heathenry called frith, which is difficult to pare down into a handful of words, but frith basically is the social order between individuals in a community which promotes peace. And it's been used pretty extensively as a weapon, essentially, by white nationalists and and neo Nazis who and cons- a coercion really from what yeah. you've told me uh, who consider themselves heathens who will go out into the world and spread their horrifying beliefs and then return to heathens and say okay here's what I've done you can't judge me and you must protect me because we share frith you have a responsibility to protect me from outsiders. Because that's that's the idea of Frith, is that it protects the kindred from threats that might might attack any one individual. The idea of Frith is, well, you have the whole community behind you. And, and it's been used in this way to force the heathen community to accept and hide and protect these individuals. My stance on that is that I don't owe Frith to racists. Or white nationalists, because I don't keep troth, or which, which is trust, uh, the bond of community. I don't keep troth with uh, anyone who believes that entire segments of the human species are inferior to their own. So I don't owe them shit, much less frith. And not everyone agrees with me on that subject, which is why I am not affiliated with a group. Or two. Yeah, which is it's why I'm not affiliated with the Asatru Folk Assembly or the Asatru Alliance, which are white nationalist and folkish, respectively, because those communities take, well, first of all, those communities are run by white nationalists, 
and they take the concept of frith as like law and they they use it to protect members who are hostile detrimental members of the community and i think that's morally repugnant so as a solitary heathen i can say i apply frith very sparingly to to the community i want to build which is one that's inclusive and welcoming and that doesn't condemn people based on their ethnicity or their sexual orientation or their gender because i think those things are functionally irrelevant to who you are as a person the problem that i run into uh, as a solitary heathen trying to study my religion is that it's hard to figure out how much bias is coming from these people in sources where they don't explicitly come out and say you know I believe black people are genetically indisposed to civilization as a concept, which is a position espoused by Vox Day, the publisher of the book in question. So if they don't come out and say that in the text I'm reading, it's it's hard sometimes to know that that's what their position is. So every source that I that I want to study, I have to find the author, and then do like a deep dive, like background check on the author to try and figure out if they have beliefs I find personally repellent. And once I've done that, I have to decide if I can afford to discard this source entirely, or if I just have to sift through it very carefully and do the best I can to remove whatever inherent bias is being brought to this work. And I think there's an extent to which the same process needs to be undertaken mm-hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. with all of our sources. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. exactly, yeah. Yep. Absolutely, because well, for me, I'm I am a witch. Mm-hmm. I am not a Wiccan. Most of the material out there is Wiccan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, so you have to. Remove... I have to. Re- I really have to sift through, you know, a lot of what's out there, mm-hmm. because a, a lot of it I don't. It doesn't apply to me. Yeah. yeah, I think that's true. Even in the Celtic Reconstructionists, is because a lot of those people who are doing that came out of Wicca, came out of Wicca and brought it with and them brought it brought some of that with them intentionally so even, or otherwise right so as I've been reading through books I'm like mm-hmm. wow that seems really Wiccan to me and then I read it further and I'm like <laughs> oh that's because oh, it is because, because it's it is. Wiccan. <laughs> and, so, and then and then you're in this position where like a lot of Wicca was inspired by or um influenced by um or stolen from or stolen, or stolen from, from. Celtic uh, religion, and so it's you have to figure out like, well, did this actually come originally from Celtic sources, or was it created wholesale by Wicca? And how can I tell the difference right. at yeah. this stage? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and so yeah, there, there. I I agree that there is an element of that in in all in all the writing. Right. But I think mm-hmm. the most important thing in light of our discussion here is you know we're talking about the character. Of the yes. person who's yeah. doing the writing, rather than the than um, yeah the t- the, the tradition the tradition right. from which they came or yeah. the or the or the and various I rituals. and I and I do want to go back to Frith really quickly and say, if you wouldn't let Frith protect a white nationalist, don't let Frith protect a racist or a rapist. Exactly. If you if you, if you are in a heathen community and someone in your community just flat out told you they were a Nazi and you wouldn't let Frith protect that person, don't let Frith protect someone who comes to you and says, hi, I sexually abused someone. Because that's, it's... It's the same thing. It's, yeah, it's the it's, same thing. It's yeah. morally it's, repugnant it's, it's, to support that person. It's right. someone who is willing to hurt another person for literally nothing but their own satisfaction. Mm-hmm. And that's that's not the kind of people we want in community. And I do think that that's uh, relevant to the wider... That is, I mean, that is the definition of being antisocial. Exactly. And I I think it's relevant to the wider pagan community in this situation with Moira, who um, is stating that she was raised in a pagan family Mm -hmm. where she was horrifyingly abused. We can't ignore that and just dismiss it. Yep. It has to be addressed. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, these are all, and I don't. We don't have the answers. No, to no. Really. not even close. Um, or to any. This is an yeah. ongoing mm-hmm. conversation in our family. You just uh-huh. happen to be privy to some of it. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> this is a, well, two days, I think, of conversations yeah. for mm-hmm. all three of us. And four days a, of studying. Right, and, for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because I found out about it and kind of kept it to myself for mm-hmm. a couple yeah. of and days. 
um, while I was getting my own thoughts in line before I brought it to all of us. And then we thought, okay, well, we probably ought to do a podcast mm-hmm. about this and it needs to be its own thing right. because we needed to put those trigger warnings at the beginning. Yeah. 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 Um, absolutely. You know, we're, and if we want to protect if people. You thought this, that this topic would be okay for you and you listen to this, to this episode and you're not okay. Email me. Leave us a comment. You it, can email if, any one of us. We'll right. be happy to, yeah, to if, correspond if, with you. If this has upset you um, and you need someone to talk to, we're around. We really do. We we care about you guys. I know we've never spoken to you because we just figured out how comments work. <laughs> but um, <laughs> And this is only our second episode. And this is episode. only our second episode. But, um, but we do care about you guys and we want you to be safe. And if this has made you feel unsafe, please let us know. There, there are resources out there. If you're not feeling like you can figure out what they are right now, email me and I'll find them for you. Yep. Yeah. And we'll put a list of some of those uh, in mm-hmm. the links section on the website. So the website's threepagansandacat.com. Yep. Yep. Our email addresses will be in the notes. You can also uh, fill out the comment form on the website. That comes to me directly. Yeah, that's, um, uh, that's I think, the contact tab. Contact tab, yeah. yes. Yep. So yep. Honestly, um, even if you just want me to light a candle for you, please let me know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, same. I... Uh, if you like, if if you need to talk to your ancestors and you don't know how to do that, I have an ancestor shrine that I maintain. Let me know if if you need a- any kind of help with that. If you if you want a rune and and literally, if there's anything I can do, if you just want someone to talk to, if you want somebody in the LGBT community that you can that you can un unburden, unburden yourself to, to mm-hmm. I'm here. Um, le- literally anything you need, let me know. Yep, that goes for all of us. Exactly. All right. Thank you guys for listening. I know it's been a heavy topic. Yeah, it's it been a rough one. Um, we will have another episode coming out in about a week. Yeah, that'll be in bulk. Yeah, which was originally our plan for for this, this episode. Yep, yep. Um, it's just been pushed back a little bit, but yep. that's still coming, and it'll be a lot more pleasant than this one. Yes. Yep. And then we'll have uh, our normal monthly episode mm-hmm. coming up right after right that. Right after in that. Bulk. Yeah. So you're uh, you're gonna get three episodes in a row, guys. Have fun. But thank you all for listening to us uh, as we rambled through this. I think it was an important topic mm-hmm. that we we really felt like we needed to discuss mm-hmm. in front of our microphone. Yeah. So that other people could could start to process this as well. Yep. So that's right. Thank you guys for listening and we'll see you soon. Yep.